Shirley Temple. Some generations ago, Dinah Maria Mulock Craig wrote a book that was destined to become one of the most beloved fairy tales of all time. Tonight, we present The Little Lame Prince, starring Rex Thompson and Lauren Green. You're a queen, you're a king, when your heart's young as spring. Oh, how bright the world can see. made for children, children, and we're children, as long as we can dream. Yes, he was the most beautiful prince that ever was born, and all was serene until the morning of his second birthday. The morning of the accident. How did it happen? Well, the cannon boomed twice in a birthday salute, just as the royal family was setting out in the royal coach, and the horses bolted in panic. There was no holding them. To save his little son, the king threw him on a bed of blue cornflowers. As for the king and queen, they perished in the deep moat that circled the palace. Though Prince Dolar had only become lame, his wicked uncle told the people he had died, and for ten long years he kept the little prince prisoner in the hapless tower, which was far, far away in the middle of the lonely plains. Are you ready, friends? Guess where we are. China. that China has over one million square miles and a population of 300 million? It really does, Joseph. And listen to this. China is ruled by an emperor. Maybe he'll invite us to his court. And General, you can wear all your decorations. And you, Your Majesty, you can wear your gown of finest lace. side of the lonely plains. You ought to know. You've read that geography book over and over again. But you've been there. Tell me, please. I'd rather not speak about it. But I want to know. I... I'll make a bargain with you. In two days, only two days, I'll answer all your questions. Two days, I'll be 12 years old. Has that something to do with it? I... I can't tell you, dear Prince. Flora, what are you afraid of? I've made you a raspberry tart for dessert. Isn't that nice? Flora, am I really a prince? A prince? Why, bless you, you're more than just... More than what? Your supper's getting cold. I want an answer, Flora. Dear, dear Prince, I've tended you and cared for you since the day you were born. 
trust me when I say there's some things it's dangerous for you to know. Don't be angry with me, my love. We've been happy here in some ways. Happier than some who wear crowns on their heads. Crowns? Eat your supper now. And the crown pressed heavy on King Bertrand's head as he recalled the prophecy of an ancient soothsayer. Before his twelfth birthday will have flown, the blue flowers will again have grown. And he who the others think of as dead will come to take the crown from off your head. But tear them out! Tear them out! Oh, it's no use, Your Majesty. I tear them out in one place and twice as many spring up only a few feet away. How can flowers without roots grow again? I'm not sure, Your Majesty. But the, the little prince, the babe who died, loved these flowers. And it might be that his spirit... Silence! Well, keep tearing them out. Get as many men as you need to help you. Not a, not a sign, not a trace, not a root must remain. Do you understand? <laughs> <laughs> Who dares to laugh? You sent for me, sire? I sent for you, soothsayer. The blue cornflowers, they're growing again. As I foretold. I'll have them out, every last one. Aye. And will your majesty also check the tides and stop the sun in its course? Now leave off speaking in riddles. My meaning is clear, sire. Clear enough for a child of... Twelve to understand. I only meant to convey, my lord, that not even you can halt the passage of time. Be gone. Be gone, be gone, be gone, be gone, be gone. Be gone. All of you, all of you. Sire. And, and you too. And return with sufficient men to rid me of these flowers. Go, go. Go. Tearing out the blue flowers will not save your crown. Then tell me what to do. Kill him. Kill Prince Dolo. Kill my... my own nephew? He who wishes to rule must have neither qualms nor weakness. If I were to commit such a terrible crime, I'm a blood against the very blood in my veins. Who knows what shattering curse would follow? Though there must be another way to defeat the prophecy. Perhaps there is, but none so sure. What other choice is open to me? Speak! Speak! Speak, I command you! Keep him prisoner two more days. After his twelfth birthday, you will be safe. Keep him prisoner. Yes, yes, of course. Keep him prisoner. Keep him but, but he is a prisoner. And he has no friends to help him. He cannot escape. Only Flora and the three of us know he's alive. One who is friendless today may have friends tomorrow. One who is friendless today may have friends. Quinto. Quinto. Quinto, ride to the hapless tower tonight at once. Do not leave the prince for a moment. For the next two days, make certain he is never alone. <laughs> if only I had the wings of a bird who were light enough to ride the wind that blows across the plains. You look so wise, Your Majesty. Can you tell me what to do? Who are you? I am your fairy godmother. My fairy? 
fairy godmother? Yes, dear prince. Your mother was my very special friend, and I promised her that I'd watch over you always. But I always thought I was watching over you. That's as it should be. Why have you never spoken to me before? Why did you let me stay here for ten whole years? There is a time for everything. And now the time has come for you to leave. Go ahead, take it. A cloak. Never in the whole world has there been a cloak like this. It's soft and light, yet it feels so strong. I made it out of the love your father and mother had for you. Out of your first smile when you were a baby. Your every kind word, your every good deed. When you were asleep, I'd steal in here and capture your dreams. All in this cloak? It will carry you far, far away until the hapless tower is only a memory. Can I reach the North Pole? In the twinkling of an eye. The stars? Even further. How soon can I go? First, you must learn how to use the cloak. And remember, dear Prince, something as wonderful as this cannot be used selfishly. Or just for fun. Can't I have fun? I've never had fun before. You'll have fun, my love. But first, you have a mission to perform. What kind? Every person must find his own mission. I can only tell you this. Yours must be fulfilled before your twelfth birthday. But that's the day after tomorrow. You have no time to lose. When you want to go someplace, put on the cloak and say, skiddledy wax. Skiddledy wax. And to come back, say, skiddledy ho. Skiddledy ho. You'll make many friends, and they will help you. But remember, dear prince, ultimately, everything will depend upon you. Your own will, your own determination. Where shall I start? Always start as high as you can. Let the stars show you the way. Oh, stars. How beautiful you are tonight. Take me to the stars. Skiddledy wax. <laughs> so fast, my boy. Well, you could have chipped a corner off one of my stars. Who are you? I am the Starduster, at your service. And always glad to see a friend. A friend? Oh, careful, careful. I don't have too many. Most people don't appreciate all the hard work that goes into tending the stars. I've always loved the stars. I know you have. And it's nice to be appreciated. In return, I have a gift for you. Uh, oh, would you mind holding these a minute? A pair of spectacles. Spectacles? Oh, but they're very special spectacles. Oh. They will help you to learn the value of a dream. Is that important? Important? Don't you have any dreams? Yes, of course. I have one that keeps coming back. I see myself sitting in a bed of flowers. Blue flowers. I'm very young in this dream. Ah, the dreams of youth. 
Those are the best kind. Does my dream have any value? Tremendous value, tremendous. Find the place for the blue flowers. But how shall I do that? The spectacles. Why, I can see for miles. What do you see? A grand city with tall towers and many, many people. That's the kingdom of Grothinia. Is that where I'll find the flowers? Why don't you go there and see? I think I will. Thank you. No, 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 you keep those. They're yours. Mine? But I can't just take them. Here, you must let me give you something. Oh, what's that? My geography book. It's my dearest possession. It took me out of the hapless tower long, long before I had my cloak. Well, in that case... Thank you, my boy. Thank you for the spectacles. Thank you for the dream. It's your dream. Take me to Grafinia. Skittledy wax. Good luck, good luck, good luck. <laughs> As dawn broke, Prince Dolor had his first glimpse of the beautiful city of Grothinia. The city was just beginning to awaken, and from the surrounding countryside, people started to stream toward the main gate. Bring me some of the blue corn flowers from the princess garden. Will you tear them out anyway? Shh. I've warned you not to mention those flowers. The king has made it a crime for anyone except myself even to look at them. Oh, but they're so beautiful. Not to King Bertrand, they're not. My task is to destroy them. I'll bring you some roses from the queen's arbor instead. Amelia? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Don't worry. <laughs> Your father didn't see me. Oh, Marco, why must you be a thief? Well, what other line of work is there in Grothinia for an honest man? Father works and he's honest. Honest? He accepts the king's money to destroy the little prince's garden. You take the king's money too. Ah, but the king is wicked, so I steal from him. It's not quite the same thing. If you were such a good thief, you'd steal some of the blue flowers for me. Shh. Now, I love you, Amelia. I'm not going to throw my life away on a whim. If I stole the blue flowers, King Bertram would never rest until he hanged me. Why, it, it's worse than not paying taxes. Why should the king make such a fuss over a patch of blue flowers anyhow? Well, whatever his reason, it's evil. You can be sure of that. <laughs> Too many guards around here today. They're probably looking for me. I'll see you later. Flowers. Fresh flowers. Pretty flowers. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it was my fault. I didn't see you. It's all so wonderful. Well, it's just a street. But all these people, and horses, houses, and shops, and the children, and your flowers. There were never any flowers in, in. I've always loved flowers. Would you like some? Oh, may I? Thank you. They're beautiful. 
Do you have any blue ones? Blue flowers? Oh, I can see you're not from this kingdom. Why, you'd have to go all the way to the Magic Glen for those. The Magic Glen? Where is that? <laughs> I was only joking. It's supposed to lie far, far beyond the rainbow's end, in the Purple Mountains. But no one's actually seen it. I'd like to. Oh, be satisfied with these flowers. There's little enough we can enjoy here. Why do you say that? It's a grand city, the loveliest I've ever seen. Where do you live? Far away? Quite far. Don't tell me you're here alone. Do you have any friends, any relatives? I have a friend. How sweet of you to say that. I could show you the city if you like. Oh, would you? I have to sell my flowers, but... But I'll be finished by noon. Why don't you come back then and meet me by the main gate? Wonderful. And while you're selling your flowers, I can go to the Magic Glen. <laughs> Aren't you a funny boy? I told you no one can find it. Well, now, don't get into any trouble. How can I get into trouble? Everyone's so kind. Double and redouble the guard around the town gate. Warn them to be on the lookout for the boy. He's lame. But, but Your Majesty, there is more than one boy who is lame. How, how shall we recognize him? I'll show you how. Look at this picture. Study it closely. Show it to your men. But, but this is a picture of the king. I am the king! Oh, uh, your forgiveness, Majesty. I, I, I only meant that uh, the one who died, your brother, King Damien. That is so. And because this young imposter resembles him so closely, he claims to be Prince Dolor. But Prince Dolor is dead, sire. Precisely. Therefore, you will arrest this young imposter and have him thrown into the darkest dungeon of this castle. It shall be done, sire. Oh, King, was it not enough that you imprisoned Prince Dolor in the tower? I warned you to be silent. Was it not enough that you stole his throne and told the people he was dead? Prince Dolor. Have it thrown into the dungeon. Mercy, Your Majesty, mercy. I don't beg for myself. I plead for the boy! Mercy for Prince Zola! Mercy! <laughs> No, no. No, there's no need for that. Just just step over here a little ways, will you? It's all right. None of them have been crushed. So this is the Magic Glen. I've never seen such colors before. Oh, I get my colors from the rainbow. <clears throat> no. Don't you contradict me. I didn't mean to. Every rainbow that climbs into the sky starts right here. Really? Of course, really. And then I grind them up, and then I melt them down and make the colors for the flowers. It's hard to believe. What's that? Oh, forgive me, mm. but I've read books on botany. Oh, oh, oh books. Yes, sir. They say that the pigmentation in plant life comes from the sun, earth, and the earth, and... And? And chemicals. Chemicals? Yes, sir. Chemicals. No chemicals? Just ordinary rainbows, ground up and melted down. Why, it's blue. What's that? It's blue like the flowers that grow in my dream. I don't grow flowers here. I only paint them. I see. 
seem to remember a place. A garden near a window. A palace window. And there were flowers. Like this one? Yes. Tell me, are they very common? Oh, not when they're... Not when they're as blue as that. I must try to see. Oh, these spectacles don't seem to be working. That's because you don't know how to use them. You've got to learn to see things in their true colors. And not even magic spectacles will help you do that. I don't understand. Put them on. Now, quickly. What do you see? Towers. And, and a gate. Why, it's the city of Grathenia. Uh-huh. And now keep them on. What? What? Go on. What? And a palace garden. And weeds. Mm -hmm. And blue flowers. My blue flowers. Exactly. I must go back. You'd better take my gift with you. You'll need it. Your gift? The ability to see things in their true colors. Well... I'm sure you're very kind, but why should I need that? You will need it. <clears throat> well, thank you. And if I may, there's a young lady who's been very kind to me. Oh, good God. Take them, take them, take them. <laughs> well, thank you again. Yes. Skiddledy ho. Any sign of him? No, sir. Fools, he must be found. The king has offered a big reward. Say, what are you doing here? I'm meeting someone. Someone your father approves of, hmm? He will when he meets him. Hmm. Do I know him? No. Stranger, hmm? Mm-hmm. I promised to show him the city. I see. Is he handsome? Uh-uh. I mean as handsome as I am. Oh, much more so. And he has much better manners. I suppose he's honest, too. Oh, I should think so. I hope I didn't keep you waiting. Oh, no. Marco, this is my friend. I'm sorry, but I paid a visit to the Magic Glen. I went on my traveling cloak. Traveling cloak? Yes. My fairy godmother gave it to me. Young man, you ought not to lie like that. It's bad for your character. Weakens the moral fiber. But it's true. Oh, traveling cloaks. And Fairy God. I brought you some flowers. Thank you. Here, here. Where did you get those? Don't, don't, don't tell me. There's only one place. Not everyone is afraid. We are going sightseeing. Won't you join us? No, thank you. Too many guards around. Whom are they seeking? Whom do you think? There's your father. No, no, wait. Even you can help. I've heard news. Terrible, yet wonderful news. What's come over him? The image. Image of his father. And he's lame, too. What are you talking about, father? The image of whom? Our late king, King Damien. You were too young to remember. But I worked in the palace garden. I was there and saw him every day. Take him away, quickly. <laughs> Seize him! Run! Run! Save the prince! Arrest that boy! Arrest that boy! Hey! hey. Ha ha! This 
way. Follow me. In here. Every word. I heard it all. Thank heaven I saw him in time. Flora did not lie to me. I am indeed a prince. Ah, uh, much more than a prince. If what he says is true, by rights, you should be king. Flora said that too. She said I was more than a prince. For the first time, I begin to understand my mission. My friends, you shall all be richly rewarded for your pains. Well, I don't like to be disrespectful, uh, your esteemed highness. The only reward we're likely to get is a noose right around the neck. Oh, hush, Marco. Don't frighten him. A king has never frightened Amelia. Yes, your highness. I see now why I was given the ability to see things in their true colors. I see now that the people of Grothinia are not as happy as I supposed. One hardly needs a special gift to see that, uh, Your Highness. Would you be kind enough to answer one more question? If I can, Highness. Do kings have any fun? Mm -hmm. That's a difficult question. Your Highness, there is much more to it than having fun. Now you sound like my fairy godmother. Please, Your Highness, stay back. They might see you. Here come the guards. Get back, get back. Guards! Looking for me. Take me away. Far, far away. Take me to the North Pole. Out of my skiddly wax. Where's that boy? He was here. Where did he go? Answer me! We saw nothing, sir. Oh. Take them along. Come we on, have ways on. to make on. them talk. Come along. Come on. Silly question. The North Pole, of course. Don't come too close. I can tell you're one of those warm people. I really, really can't expose myself to warmth. I'm terribly sorry. I didn't know where I was going. I was so frightened. Frightened? Really? I thought I heard you say kings were never frightened. You heard me? But you're so far away. Oh, dear. Must we waste time in tedious explanation? Let's just say my ears are sharp. If you promise not to be too warmly grateful, I can give you something so that you'll never be frightened again. You mean a magic sword or a shield? Those crude weapons are so ineffectual. Let me see. I could give you cold logic. Oh, no, you're too young for that. Ah, I have it. What? I see determination. That is my gift to you. But how can that help? You foolish, foolish boy. Kingdoms and empires, too, have been won by icy determination. 
I'll free them. I'm going to find my uncle and tell him I want to be king. Well, I wouldn't do it just that way. I would. My mind's made up. I see determination. You see, you're braver already. I must hurry back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't overdo it. I can just feel myself thawing. Skiddledy home. <laughs> Determined to free his friends, Prince Dolor made a vow. I'm going to find my uncle and tell him I want to be king again. Big words from a little man. But we suspect his uncle will have something to say about that. How strange it was for Prince Dolor to find himself in a place remembered in a dream. Yet more than a dream. A haunting memory of his early childhood. This is... As I remember it, I was a little boy, and I crawled among the blue flowers. I, I found the place of my dream. Should they know what it's like to be a king? What's it like to be king? Who said that? Where are you? Right here. Who are you? Do you live in the palace? I'm going to. Servants, children, I suppose. You ought to be asleep. What's it like to be king? Do you have any fun? Fun? Uh, the only fun I have is outwitting my enemies. Outside of that, it's just one worry after another, one worry after another. They're always plotting against me. Who is? The people. Who else? They're dangerous. My life is always in peril. Then there really isn't any point in being king. No. No. I wanted to be king because I... I thought I'd enjoy ordering everybody about and having my own way. But you didn't. No. Now I'm always afraid. Well, thank you very much. Wait a minute. You're lame. Who are you? That face. It can't be guards. Quinto, guards. Seize him. Seize that boy. Seize him. Uncle, uncle, don't let them hurt me. How dare you call me uncle? I'm not your uncle. Throw him into the dungeon with the others uncle. and never let them out. Uncle. I've done it. I've done it. I've formed the prophecy. By dawn, I shall be safe. The soothsayer has said it. The prince cannot harm me once the first rays of dawn strike the palace windows. In one hour, it'll be dawn. If only I hadn't dropped my cloak. No. No, I mustn't depend upon the cloak. I must depend upon myself. How? How, Marco? My little prince, you must try to get some sleep. I did sleep for a while, Flora. 
I dreamt that we escaped. My poor little prince. You mustn't torture yourself with such dreams. They serve no purpose. That's not true, Flora. Every dream has a purpose. The value of a dream. It can only mean one thing. There must be a way to escape. But that is impossible, Your Highness. Uh, that door's heavy. You can't break it down with dreams. Why do we have to break it down? Why can't you pick the lock? Pick that lock? No one would ever dream of that. It's three inches thick, solid steel. I've read about locks. If you don't oil them, they get rusty. Parts of this are already eaten away with rust, ready to yield. Oh, do it, Marco. Do it if you love me. Now look, I know all about love and locksmiths. Let me tell you, it has no practical application. Try, Marco, try. Mm. For sure. I don't think so, Flora. That wasn't in my dream. around us. The ability to see things in their true colors. Oh, thank you. Thank you, painter of the glen. Prince? Prince, I don't understand. I know where we are. Look. Look there. The blue flowers. It was here that I dropped my cloak. Flowers. Your Highness, it's impossible to see a thing. It's the garden. We are beneath the king's window. Shh, shh. The dawn. Why is it so late in coming? It's not late, Uncle. It's just beyond the hill. Who's there? Who's there? Guards! Guards! Hold him! Hold him till I get there! Take your hands off the prince! Marco, Marco, it's useless to struggle! They'll kill you! Hands off the boy! That is right. Fine heroics. <laughs> and what good will it do? Where can he go? Well, for once, my blockhead of a captain is right. Where will he hide? I have no need to hide. Prince, 
Your cloak. Don't let him. <laughs> Skittledy wax. <laughs> Come down. Come down this instant. Why are you so afraid, Uncle? Come down or I'll, I'll, I'll hang your friend. You shall do no such thing. The dawn is breaking. Flora has told me of the prophecy. And I am determined to put an end to your tyranny. <laughs> Isolate each other. God, seize him. Seize him. Seize him. Quinto, drag him down. Drag Soon all in Gratinia will know that Prince Dollar is not dead. The people will rise against you, Uncle, and your guards with them. You tried to frighten me. A real king is never frightened, Uncle. I'll give you three to make up your mind. Then I'll go to the people. They have not forgotten my father's likeness. <laughs> threats, idle threats. <laughs> One. <sighs> two. God, God, get them. Yep. Three. I'm going, Uncle. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. I, I surrender, I surrender. Mercy, Prince, mercy. Henceforth, you will address me as your majesty. I know the prophecy. I'm ready to die. The prophecy said nothing about dying. It only said that your life of wickedness would end. Now it is time for you to start your good life. But it's, 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 it's customary to seek revenge. Only a foolish man does so. And if I am to be king, I must rule wisely. Yes, Prince. Uh, your Majesty. I can use your counsel and advice. Would you be willing to be my minister? Minister? And no tricks. Oh, no. No, no. no tricks, Your Majesty. I promise you. You have many friends to help you, Your Majesty. It is good to have friends. But it is even more important for me to depend upon myself. Thank you, Fairy Godmother. I have learnt to know the value of a dream. I have learnt to see things in their true colors. I have learnt to be determined. Determined to help my people. Listen, Uncle, and hear my first decree. Let there be a holiday. Let us all have fun. Dream away, little man. Dream as long as you can. Don't grow up. Of you. Dreams are made for children and for children.